Hi there. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to search through folders using PowerShell. To do this, we're going to use the get child item commandlet. This commandlet is really, really easy to use. I find it really handy at work because if you want to search out a particular file or folder and you're not sure where to look, you can use this and you'll find it almost instantly. So what can we do with it? We can search through folders. We can we can exclude and include certain files and folders from our searches. And we can just, if we want to, return files with a certain file extensions by a certain name or an age of a file. So if we wanted to search for anything that is over three years old. We can do content-based searches. And most of all, it's really, really easy to use. So let's get started and let's have a look in PowerShell. So here we are in PowerShell, the PowerShell ISE. Um, I am going to just type in get child item. And as you can see, PowerShell prompts me. This is the command that I want. Um, I'm going to search in path of the location I want to search through. And I'm going to search through program files. And common files, let's search through there. Well, first of all, let's show you. Let's just search through program files. So this is the standard results that return, but let's say for argument's sake, I'm not happy with just these four values and I want to see what else can be returned. I can use get member. Now what this will show me is every property that can be returned from this command. So you see these properties down here? This is what I can search on. So let's say I wanted to search on full name, do your pipe, and select full name. Perfect. This shows you everything within program files. But now what happens if I want to see what's inside this Android folder or any of these folders in here? What I can do is I can use the recurse switch and the recurse switch will search through the first folder then I'll go to the next folder and search everything within inside that and so on. So as you can see, rather than return a lot of results, let, let's just have a look at common files. It's returning every file. You can see that by the file extensions there. Now let's say I wanted to return the creation date of those as well. So I could type in creation date, followed by a comma. Let's say I wanted to include the last write time in my results. I could enter last write time. And that will return here. So now at the top of my results, somewhere, I've got the header of those as well, just to show you that that's the value. Now let's say I wanted to sort these by, I could do a sort, last right time, so I think I sort, sort by last right time. So this shows it in order, oldest first. And if I wanted to return that, so oldest last, sorry. So if I wanted to return that oldest first, I could do it descending. I'll return it the other way around. So what happens now if I just want to search through those folders and find all XML files, for example? I can include the extension. I can run that, and you can see the extension. Then I can even do a where extension is equal to XML and it will return all XMLs. I might want to do just executable files. I might want to see if there's any text files in there. And it shows me there's a few. So that's how you filter your results with this command look. It's a fantastic command look. And try and have a think how you can start to use it at work. If you've got any processes or tasks in the morning where you've got to search through a lot of folders and find out if a file's actually arrived. If you could create this script to see if it's actually there rather than search through yourself it 
little ideas like that. So we have this last part here. So remember to use the recurse switch. This will allow you to search through all folders. The select command for sort, so you can put everything into order and find out what properties you can actually return, which, which you can use on any command that you want, not just get child item. But I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. If you've got any questions, please include them in the comments below. Thank you.